Everyone knows they need to get to zero trust, but getting to zero trust can be quite a challenge. Software-defined perimeter can accelerate your strategy. Hi, I'm Steve Murphy. I'm a vice president at ARG, and while I work for ARG, this video is my own and doesn't reflect the views of my employer. First, we're going to look at what SDP is, and then we're going to talk about where you are on your zero trust journey and how SDP can facilitate and simplify that journey. We'll look at the specific benefits of SDP, some use cases, and then finally, who are the main vendors in the space? Software Defined Perimeter, or SDP, is a recognition that the traditional perimeter is waning. Our firewalls are no longer as effective as they've been in the past because our user base is distributed and, and isn't sitting behind that firewall infrastructure. SDP is a software solution that helps us get to a zero trust networking philosophy or framework and it's based upon the identity of the user and the device that they're using. So it is establishes certain entitlements, rights, and access based upon who the user is and where they're accessing the network from and on what device. It creates a micro perimeter. Now I hate the word perimeter when we're talking about zero trust and uh, software defined perimeters, but it's hard to get away from that term when it's actually in, in the name. But I think the entire concept of perimeter has to go away so we can think more creatively about how to implement zero trust type of methodologies. Anyway, uh, we'll concede the naming convention to the industry and use it throughout. Now, SDP also cloaks the network and the systems that sit within that network, preventing other people from seeing anything outside of those particular entitlements and access rights that the user has. And it also interfaces with other control systems, allowing you to, to create a dynamic environment where SDP is assisting you in controlling for both admin and uh, regulatory compliance. I've mentioned Zero Trust several times so far. Let's quickly take a look at what Zero Trust is. It's generally recognized as the way larger organizations have to operate their networks, but it's also highly complex and it's very hard to get to zero trust, especially quickly. Normally zero trust, if, if you've seen our zero trust video, uh, normally zero trust is best implemented during major upgrade events or when we're introducing new platforms and introducing zero trust for those specific platforms. And once we've rolled out zero trust, again, over a lengthy time because it can be complex, tuning and maintaining that can become very challenging. So you absolutely can implement zero trust with the tools that you have today, but it's a heavy lift and managing it and maintaining it over time can be a significant investment. That's why software defined perimeter or SDP is really become a very popular solution for zero trust. SDP accelerates our journey to zero trust because by sitting on top of the network, by interoperating with our network components, it alleviates significant reconfiguration challenges. It also provides a consolidated management system that allows us a single pane of glass in order to manage our zero trust uh, methodology or zero trust implementation. It's pre-integrated with all the major cloud service providers. So again, we have an ease of implementation advantage and it's also very easy to roll out to our users. And as we'll see in just a few moments, you can roll it out to subsets of users or organization wide in a relatively easy project. And generally SDP is transparent to the user. I'll warn you right now that one way it's not very transparent to the user is a user won't be able to do a lot of the things that they've been able to do in the past. And there's a transition there in terms of educating users on what they're now allowed to do based upon the rights and entitlements that they have been assigned and where they are and what devices they're using. SDP creates a zero trust network the same way you might using your own network components. But in, in an SDP environment, the solution provider is responsible for all the components. So we have users that want to access the network. Instead of going to a VPN concentrator or firewall directly, which is on your network, by the way, and attempting to authenticate there and establish a path into the network to access their work systems, users in an SDP environment will go to a remote proxy off the network where they will be authenticated, their entitlements will be assigned, 
and that proxy device will send a message to the network gateway saying expect a session from the user that when that session is established that gateway knows exactly how to entitle and authorize that user's experience on the network they are micro segmented through the network to the resource that they're trying to access and they don't have any visibility into any of the other network elements that they might encounter once that session is over it is torn down and if the user wants to access another capability they have to go through that same process this holds true for cloud services as well where the proxy is working with your single sign-on solution and assisting people into network environments into cloud network environments in a similar fashion one of the best analogies that I've heard referring to software defined perimeter is that of a secure hotel imagine driving up to a hotel and having your ID checked as you step out of your vehicle that uh, ID check determines whether or not you have a reservation and specifically where your room is located in the hotel you're given the pass card to your room and you walk through the lobby but you are not walking through a normal lobby you can only see the elevator doors that you're accessing to get to your floor when you get into the elevator the only button that you're allowed to push is the button for the floor in which you are staying and when you exit the elevator the only door in that hallway that you can see is the door that leads to your room nothing else in that hotel is visible that's what SDP provides in a software solution rather than trying to configure your hardware to accomplish all of those controls SDP is endpoint agnostic and as I said or just tried to describe it restricts network access and system access only to those areas that you're permitted to travel it's a risk-based approach that reevaluates the context of the user access request and assigns those rights and permissions dynamically it also allows you to isolate mission critical systems and data for further authentication and it secures hybrid and cloud environments as seamlessly as it does on your own network one of the great things about SDP is it's a, it's a fantastic compliance tool it helps you regulate access to information and creates logs and reports as to who is accessing that information and under what circumstances it reduces the attack surface so if an account does become compromised that attack surface is very very narrow and very specific it can control up to layer 7 where traditional network based control mechanisms are really at layer 2 and you can simplify your firewalls and in fact I've heard people describe a future use case where SDP allows for the elimination of firewalls I'm not advising that but that's where the future of SDP may take us from a use case perspective SDP is very flexible it can be applied individually so you don't need to roll it out to the entire organization you can pick for example over entitled users people that have more access than your average user and protect them initially you also may want to roll out SDP to contractors and consultants who need certain system access but you certainly don't want to provide broad access to your network developers similarly if you don't want developers to see your entire source code for an application they're working on for example you can use SDP to limit what their visibility is within that particular de development environment admin access control is another great use case for example you you can provide access to a server only if there's an open ticket in your service management system that ticket has been approved that maintenance has been approved and the maintenance is attempting to happen or that admin is a, attempting to access that service during that maintenance window compliance management is also a great consideration with SDP in terms of reporting in terms of control and in terms of limiting access to just those individuals that need to know the information and understanding when and under what context they are accessing controlled information the SDP marketplace is evolving pretty rapidly these are some logos of some of the leaders that our firm represents but the environment is changing and all of these providers are coming at SDP from their legacy construct so some services may or may not be appropriate for your particular organization it's really important I think to use a consultant to help you figure out where your SDP best opportunity might lie we do that for free within our firm so feel free to reach out 
but it's important to understand what your end goal is and the cost associated with these providers can be uh, very different. So if cost is an issue, and it almost always is, it's also helpful to understand the relative value proposition of each of these providers before you get too deep into their solutions. So as next steps, I mentioned before, I'd be happy to have a conversation with you around SDP. There's never a charge to work with our firm within our product portfolio, so you don't have to worry about us being expensive or anything like that. And then if you got some value out of this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you want to return to this channel in the future, the best way of doing that is to subscribe so you can find your way back at any time. With that, I appreciate your time and attention. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.